Hi students, in the previous video we have seen what is electrolysis and what are the terms related to electrolysis and also the principles of electrolysis. And it's time now to see some examples of electrolysis. So in this video, the first example of electrolysis that is electrolysis of molten lead bromide is discussed. So keep watching. We know that electrolysis is the process of decomposition of a chemical substance in the molten or aqueous state by the passage of electric current. Yes, this we have discussed previously. Now, electrolysis of this molten lead bromide, as a first example we take, it's a solid substance and it is heated to melting, so the molten state is there. So, electrolysis is carried out in a silica crucible, the container used for conducting the electrolysis of molten lead bromide is a silica crucible. Now, why silica crucible? Now, silica is silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide, that is commonly called silica. SiO2 which is resistant to chemical corrosion resistant to chemical corrosion okay this is one thing secondly also because it can withstand high temperatures high temperatures Okay, so two reasons I am saying resistant to chemical corrosion and it can withstand high temperatures. Now, bromine is a product of this electrolysis. Bromine is a halogen, highly reactive. It is highly reactive and also corrosive. It can corrode. Corrosive means it will react and damage things. Okay, so that is why we need a silica crucible. And any other container cannot be taken like that. Okay, so I think you understood why we are using a silica crucible to carry out the reaction. You can see the arrangement here. The, this is the molten uh, lead bromide inside and the crucible. This is a crucible. Crucible is an apparatus used for carrying out high temperature reaction. So silica crucible and uh, setup is there. Now let us see the other things about this electrolysis. That is. The electrodes used. The electrodes anode is made up of graphite. Again, because graphite is resistant to corrosion by bromine. Now, bromine is highly reactive. It's a halogen. So, if graphite is used, it does not react, okay. So, anode, the product at anode is bromide, you, you will understand as you go down. Now, we will see that the cathode is made up of graphite or iron. Here, we have a choice, you may use iron or graphite, any passive uh, electrode can be used there, right. So, we understood why we use graphite for the anode. Now, the electrolyte is molten lead bromide, molten lead bromide. See, the state here, molten or aqueous state, see, is usually used for electrolysis. Now, here the aqueous state is not possible. Molten state is used, aqueous state is not possible. Why? Only molten state. Because lead bromide, PBBr2, is insoluble in water. It is insoluble in water. So, we cannot have aqueous solution. So, only option is to have molten state. Now, molten state, because it is an electrovalent compound, it requires high temperatures. High temperatures. Okay. It has a high melting point. That is why silica crucible is used because of high temperature and also due to corrosion. Right. So, the lead bromide dissociate to give lead ions and bromide ions. Br minus ions are produced. So, this is the electrolyte. Now, let us see when the current is switched on. We know that the whole process starts when the current is switched on. When the current is switched on, the anions migrate to the anode and the cations to the cathode. We are familiar with that. So, what is the reaction happening at the anode? We have the Br minus ion that is bromide ions coming here. It will lose electrons and form bromine atoms. Two atoms of bromine produce. Now, loss of electron here is oxidation. Yes. So, because bromide ions are losing electron and forming bromine atom, it is oxidation. Now, two of the bromine atoms combine to give bromine molecule and it will come out as red vapors at the anode. The anode you will see red vapors. This is the observation at the anode. Red vapors of bromine coming out because the molecules are formed. Then the cathode. 
Now, what is happening? The lead ions being cations migrate to the cathode. So, there they will, it will take up two electrons. Two electrons are taken up because cathode has excess of electron. The lead ions have deficiency of two electrons. It will take two electrons and form neutral lead metal, grayish white metal deposits at the cathode. This is a reduction reaction because the substance gains electron. Now, as per the principles of electrolysis, the number of electrons lost by cathode is equal to number of electrons gained by anode. You can see that here. Here, the at anode, the substance is losing two electrons which will go to the anode. So, in other words, the two electrons are gained by anode. Gained by anode. Okay. Here, these two electrons are actually lost by cathode. Lost by cathode. So, number of electrons lost by cathode is equal to number of electrons gained by anode. So, this is the principle of electrolysis. So, lead bromide, two products are obtained at anode, red vapors of bromine and at cathode, grayish white metal of lead is deposited. Now, you can see this in the diagram. So, here we have the setup, experimental setup. The silica crucible is there. Heating is done so that it melts. Molten state is achieved. And then the rods are there, the anode and the cathode. Here we have the anode here, which is graphite. And the cathode here, it can be graphite or iron. And the setup, the electric current is being connected and set up. So, the reaction takes place. So, the electrolysis of molten lead bromide gives us lead at the cathode and bromine vapors at the anode. I think you understood this. So, students, I think you understood this and uh, you can watch the video again and post your questions and uh, try to write the equations and balance yourself and subscribe the channel. Thank you.